Welcome back to the BattleBots devlog series. So in this episode, we are going to be focusing a lot on adding tons of new content, weapons, uh, changing the entire theme of the game, etc, uh, etc. Et Let's get into it. I'm in the process of trying to figure out how I want the actual, like, weapon, this, this weapon to look. Um, and I found this reference online here. I really like this kind of look to it. Um, so I'm trying to do something similar to that. And this is kind of a work in progress of what I have so far. Uh, trying to create it in Blender. Uh, and, and yeah, it's a little tricky just because like it needs to be on both sides. And it's also like it needs to go in because like... If it doesn't go in at all, technically it doesn't touch, but also it's like, uh, with VFX that can kind of be solved. Um, so, so it's definitely a little tricky. Here's the mesh that I've came up with for the drill. I, I think it looks pretty cool. Um, so in game, this is kind of what we're dealing with. It's two separate parts, the actual drill bit, and then like the back part. Um, and this will be recolored and textured differently depending on the tier. So, like, for example, this would actually be, like, metal once it's a little bit better. Um, and, and we can add some more, like, textures and stuff to it, too. Um, but I think for now, like, the very basic tier will look like this. It's kind of on theme with the wheels. Um, these will also, you know, be upgraded. So, like, for example, uh, if I change this to, like, rubber and, like, make it really dark blue or something like that and this uh i, I don't know you know it, it could be you know it, it would look like that and that would be like a new tier um same kind of deal here um so this would be the starting one and i think it looks pretty cool basically when we're gonna be fighting this will be circling around and it, it'll make for a cool effect i think so i've decided to actually kind of tone it down a little bit um in this version it's a lot more simple compared to this version. This one, I think, objectively maybe looks better, but I don't think it necessarily fit very well with kind of the, the look that I'm going for with the bots currently. Um, so this is kind of what I'm thinking it will look like on the bots now. It's, you know, it's the same kind of profile, but just slightly different look. It's a little less detailed. You know, there's a lot of, you know, little effects that were done in here but I think I went just a little too far and then this actual spiral if you like kind of went away from the you know the look and theme of the parts over here I mean even looking at like the wheels you know you can you can clearly see you know it's not super high fidelity where this I think just had a little too many triangles on it <laughs> I mean I can show the wireframe rendering and you can pretty obviously tell just from the side by side Another thing I wanted to talk about a little bit was, I think in the previous clip I mentioned how the weapon needs to be on both sides. If I just like duplicated it and put it over here, that's about right. Um, and I think, you know, when you're in battle, I actually don't think it should be on both sides. Because, you know, imagine your camera's over here. I actually think it looks kind of weird having it on both sides, and maybe it won't be super obvious that like, you know, collisions might look weird with it, you know, behind it. Um, and since when you're in battle, the camera is on this plane anyways. So I think we'll just have the weapons on the one side when you're actually battling. However, I haven't really talked about this at all, but when you're just like chilling, you know, in the lobby or doing whatever, I, I actually want, let me uh, duplicate this and turn it into a model. <laughs> and let me bring it over here let me uh anchor everything and size it down a lot something like that yeah, I, I think i want it so that essentially your your bot would like follow you around so i think we'll we'll have it on both sides when your bot is out and about kind of like following you around it's almost like a pet you know from a simulator game except it's your actual bot um so i want it to be like this so it's obvious you know your camera is actually moving, so it's important to show the, uh, you know, the weapons from both angles. Because imagine, you know, someone's viewing it from over here. Oh, I see your weapon. 
right? Um, but it just cause, uh, causes visual clutter and confusion when you're in the essential, essentially 2D plane. Also, another cool thing with these, like, essentially pets, your, your bots that will follow you around, I want it to be so that you can click on other players' bots and, and inspect them. I think it'll be really cool. You can kind of see what they have, uh, how rare maybe things are, how much damage it has, just cool things like that. I made this animation for the drill. Pretty simple. Just kind of spinning it and, you know, a tiny bit of wobbles. Looks pretty good. Let's put it into the game now. And here's what the VFX will look like. And it's like in contact with the bot. Pretty simple, but I think it looks pretty good. And it also kind of masks the, you know, not amazing overlap that I was talking about earlier. And just like that, I put it on the actual bots. So now it has the actual animation, the VFX, and sounds as well. So you can hear that now. It also has like an off sound, so when, you know, it, it stops being in contact, maybe we'll hear it here. I think you heard that one kind of, it was in contact and then it got out of contact. The small detail, but it's a nice one. So I'm experimenting with uh, another style, you know, this is obviously the old studs texture uh, style. I actually really like it. Um, I know bandwagon, whatever. I've played Roblox for a very, very long time. If I go to my profile, I joined in 2010, okay? So this is what Roblox looked uh, like to me. And uh, it's funny that this style is kind of coming back right now. I will say, I do actually think it fits this kind of game very well. You know, it's it, you're literally like building like almost like Legos in, in this game. So like, it is very thematical. All right, so I've made this little hammer kind of new weapon. So it will rotate on this point here. It has like a nice little trail effect on it. Super easy. Just using the trail instance. Um, and I uh, made this in Blender, just like the actual hammer part. It's like these two separate parts, basically. Um, so I could easily texture them differently. And then I actually just ended up like reusing this part. And I actually kind of like resized it a little bit. Kind of hard to tell, but it ended up looking better this way. And then, uh, you know, always re reuse meshes when you can. So this is actually uh, this part of the drill model. So saved a mesh there, but I think it looks really nice. So let's get it actually working now. All right, so I'm working on this new weapon, the hammer. And I I just point out and struggling a little bit. <laughs> it seems to be rotating about the center rather than the essentially node that it was like set to so you can see visually on the screen everything looks fine until you actually look closer at the debug menu and see that there's some issues and just like that everything works added some nice little like camera shake effect and also a little sound to it when like you actually punch it or once it actually hits Oh, I'm loving it. Working on a new weapon, the cannon. So this will shoot like a cannonball out of it, and it's the animation I was just doing. Super simple, but it's literally four keyframes, but I think it looks nice. Uh, we'll have like some like particle smoke effects coming out of it too, but you know, it's literally four keyframes, that's all it takes. And just like that, it's in the game. It's sound effects and everything <laughs> in the effects. I think it looks pretty good. Uh, lots of really, really subtle things. A couple of sound effects in there as well. Kind of, you see how the once the ball or once the cannonball like hits the the target, it would like crumbles. Pretty cool, right? All right, I made a new weapon. This is like a Tesla coil kind of thing. Here's like an idle animation, so it would play when it's just like chilling, and then when it's actually attacking, 
it will look something like this. Yeah, essentially what's going to happen is this will... Whenever there's any bot nearby, it will be constantly attacking like with a beam of electricity kind of thing. So it doesn't need to be like directly in contact like, you know, the drill does. Um, and to compensate, it would probably have a little less damage than the drill. Now we have the Tesla in game. So when I go ahead and click play, you'll see it will uh, attack when it's nearby and kind of let go when you get farther, far away. If I go to Clash, we can see a little bit better the actual VFX. So obviously it has like the beam and then there's some sparks flying out from it. And then where it actually contacts the robot, it kind of like has like this like spiky pops look to it. And then obviously that animation I was showing earlier. I've made a new body. Uh, made it in Blender like the other ones. And I just wanted to illustrate kind of how I uh, go about actually mapping out like where things go. Um, because it's not actually just purely random. So there's set, there's preset like nodes where things can spawn. And so here's like where each gadget could potentially spawn. Um, same thing with each weapon could potentially spawn. This way it's not, like it's still random in which ones you get and how many of each one you get. And that's based off of a various like different things. But uh, this way it's like a lot easier to fine tune things. Um, so in code, this is kind of what it looks like here. If I go down to, this one's called wave is what I named it. Uh, you define the actual vertices that map out the, uh, like the polygon geometry. That's just this outside here. And it's just the, uh, I I'm doing it with attachments because I get the, uh, the relative, uh, position to the center, which is exactly what I need when I'm mapping out the geometry, uh, through vertices. So I can just get it here. Uh, but obviously it's in 2D, not 3D. Map it out there. And then same thing kind of goes for all the weapons and gadgets. Um, along with, we have like a wheel range. So the wheels work a little bit differently where it is purely random, but it's based off of a range and a couple other factors as well. So there's like an up and down range and then a side to side range of how much it could go. And uh, this is kind of what I've been doing and how I've been mapping them out. So let's get this actually in the game now. Okay, ignore the uh, the colors. Uh, I still haven't fixed it since I've updated the, the models, but this is what it looks like in game. Um, cannon, sure. Let's do that, I think. Actually, let's do a hammer. And then when I go ahead and click play, this is kind of what it looks like in game. Uh, let me go into clash so I don't just instantly win. Pretty cool. This is the lance weapon that I've been working on. So it will essentially start kind of inside and then it will kind of lunge out and then retract, essentially. Um, uh, interesting thing I'm doing here is the actual like lance weapon part um, obviously can't fit just inside of here. So what I had to do was actually use bones, which I've never done before. So you can kind of see this, these purple things here. Um, these are controlled through the animation and you can essentially change their positions. And by doing so, essentially I have like basically a bone here and then a bone at the tip. Um, I know it looks a little weird, um, but by changing the positions of the bones, you can then actually scale the position or scale the size of parts um so like for example if i just added a keyframe here and let's let's set this bone to like all the way over here you can see i can actually scale size and uh things like that inside of an animation which you'd obviously never normally be able to do <laughs> and get some some really fun looking stuff. Um, this is something I've never done before, so this was a bit of a learning curve, but I'll probably end up doing this quite a bit more now that I know how to. And just like that, we now have the Lance in game. So it will kind of go out and then retract. And yeah. 
has a nice sound effect to it and it will kind of spark where it hits. Looks awesome. And here we have the like laser blaster kind of weapon. The animation for it. Boom. So it's kind of like a, a you know wind up and then it kind of snaps and you know a big beam of, of energy would then come out of it. Kind of doing the same trick where I, I have a bone kind of structure for uh, for this middle part to to be able to actually scale the size in the animations and uh, it's worked out very well especially for this one because it's like you know we're squishing it the actual thing in um, so it makes a lot of sense here here's the actual uh, model in blender this is what the laser looks like when it attacks now pretty basic it's kind of just like essentially a beam and some particles that come out but it definitely gets the job done I think it looks pretty nice Gotta add some sounds yet, and then it should be good to go. And now the laser has sounds. Nice little like wind up sound, and then the kind of boom attack. Also added a little bit of camera shake to it when it actually does attack. Let's see that there, kind of. Looks really nice. 